E equals to mc square shows us that matter and energy are really two sides of the same coin. The speed of light is constant. So energy is directly proportional to mass. Mass on the other hand defines matter. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Something can take space only if it assumes a property or attribute. So in other words, matter is simply frozen or condensed energy. Absolute energy as it is takes up no space or form. But the same energy can manifest itself in form by occupying space. The fan, ceiling and table you see in your room are all manifestations of energy. The air which takes form inside your bicycle tire is also energy. Take the analogy of the formless, boundless water vapor condensing and freezing so as to say into a water droplet confined to space and form. So in essence everything is energy. This is not something new in the Vedic law. Our Shrutis reveal this elaborately. We know that everything is absolute consciousness or Brahman. This is why we refer to the observable universe as Maya. Maya doesn't denote non-existence here but rather it denotes something which is unreal. A stage show is engaging but it is unreal. The actors who can represent energy manifest a particular role which is matter. In this example, for a temporary period of time and then they go back to their absolute selves which is again absolute energy. The Mahavakya, the great statements of the Upanishads, serve as the essence of the entire Vedas. So let us look at them. The Mahavakya for Rig Veda is Prajnanam Brahma. So absolute awareness is Brahman. Now let us say we translate or loosely relate Brahman. Now let us just link Brahman to energy. So this would loosely translate to absolute awareness is energy. The Mahavakya for Yajur Veda is Aham Brahmasmi, I am energy. Sama Veda, Tattva Masi, you are death. Atharva Veda, I am Atma Brahma. This Atma, this self is energy. The grade of energy condensation. The Vedas also describe the intricacy of condensation. We first look at a reference from the Taitiriya Upanishad of the Yajur Veda. The second chapter of this Upanishad is called Anandavalli. Let us look at the verse of interest. Tasmatva etasmadatmana akasha sambhutaha akashat vayuhu vayo ragnihi agne rapaha adbhyaf prithavi prithavya oshadhayaha oshadhi bhyonnam. As per this verse of Brahmanandavalli or Anandavalli, from Atma, Self, God, Consciousness, anything, came Ether. Ether is Akasha, often misinterpreted as space, but the right English term would be Ether. Then from Ether emerged Vayu or Wind. From air arose fire. From fire arose water. From water came Earth. From earth comes food which sustains our physicality as matter. So in a nutshell, from absolute consciousness to akasha, from akasha to vayu, from vayu to agni, agni to water, water to prithavi, prithavi to food, and from food comes our body, being. Now let us look at the application of this truth as revealed in the Vedas as Tantra. Vedas applied as technology is Tantra. When you enter a temple, you see the deity in the form of a vigraha. In layman term, an ideal infused with life energy. So the process of energy condensation we saw is put into application here. How? The process of condensing the deity into a physical form, in the form of a deity, a vigraha or a kalasha, is an elaborate process. For instance, we have to first create a seed, which is the asanam, for the infinite consciousness to take form as matter occupying space. We have something we refer to as the Panchasana Puja. We create and crystallize a five-dimensional or a five-layered seed through visualization. 
the deity of interest is then crystallized in form as per the dhyana shloka at the summit of this panchasana in the tantric scriptures we have a very important verse which goes as shakti adi shaktyantam asanam meaning the asana begins with shakti and ends with shakti it begins with energy and it ends with energy we have another verse aadhara shakti adi kutila shaktyantam meaning the energy begins as aadhara shakti and ends as kutila shakti so kutila shakti is the energy on which the deity is made to literally sit so the whole process here is from going to the satras to the crosses the whole panchasana concept is about condensing energy into matter to accommodate brahman or god in form the five asanas actually represent the five elements and this has significance for this we have to look at the purusha sukta which appears in all four vedas and their branches the verse goes as adhyasambhuta prithavyai rasa acha it describes as to how absolute energy after the big bang condensed and took form of ether when pure energy is condensed it forms matter the subtlest form of matter is ether ether then further condenses to form air which then condenses to form fire which then condenses to form water and finally earth now how is that so how is akasha the subtlest and earth the most gross let us look at akasha the element of akasha can be perceived by only sounds shabda the vedas were in fact downloaded as sounds or mantras from this realm of akasha the akasha is the cosmic archive that houses all information about the cosmos in the form of vibrations akasha is the subtle skeleton of the entire universe in the form of vibrations which give form to the universe now let us look at the second element air air can be perceived through sound and touch sparsha fire fire can be perceived through sound touch and form rupa fire is the first element to have a form next water water can be perceived through sound touch form and taste rasa earth earth can be perceived through sound touch form taste and smell gandhah so now you can see why in the panchasana the elements are from the grosses to satnast it starts with the asana which represents earth element and it ends with the asana which represents the ether element in fact we have another verse from the atharva vedic upanishad the surya upanishad in which we find a verse that beautifully goes aditya vai shabda sparsha rupa rasa gandha here surya who is seen as atma and brahman is declared as the very source of sound touch form taste and smell this again affirms on how absolute consciousness is very the source of the five elements so as you can see the whole science of temple management deity consecration or even a simple invocation of deity in a regular puja involves this revered formula of playing with matter and energy our very culture is therefore an evidence to the consciousness of the ancients and the skill they mastered in playing with energy and matter and understanding the science of the whole cosmos thank you for watching